This season on Everyday Gourmet, we'll be showcasing some of the beautiful recipes and produce from the Shizuoka Prefecture of Japan. Only a short train ride south of Tokyo, Shizuoka offers up stunning views of the majestic Mount Fuji. Known for its outstanding fresh seafood, rolling green tea fields and abundant fruit and vegetables, we've got a delicious selection of recipes to take your taste buds on the ultimate Japanese adventure. Surrounded by glorious mountains and perched on the edge of beautiful Suruga Bay lies the city of Yaizu. Yaizu is a major fishing port which brings the country's largest catch of tuna, as well as other seafood like shrimp and whitebait. Tuna in particular is a highly prized fish in Japan and today Dylan is going to show us one of the most popular ways to cook it. Dylan, the fish markets in Yaizu were just something else, weren't they? You can get so many things there. It's just yes. a whole wonderland of different kinds of seafood. Amazing. Just yeah. I mean, I was stuff. just trying to get out of the way because of the hustle <laughs> and bustle. And today, just to really bring back all the wonderful memories that we both had there, uh, we're going to be making a tuna tataki. We sure are. Firstly, we're going to start by searing off this maguro tuna. So this one is a yellowfin tuna. I want to just put a little bit of seasoning on there. Okay. Just sprinkle. Mm. And on top. for those at home who don't know what tataki or tuna tataki is, can you explain that a little more? Tataki is a lightly seared piece of fish. Mm -hmm. We're just going to be searing the outside, but mm. the inside is still going to be quite raw. And that's why you want a pretty thickish paste because you don't want to cook all the way through. It's just charring the outside. Exactly. Right. All right, so we're going to torch it mm -hmm. now. We just want an even kind of browning over the surface. Mm -hmm. And getting a blowtorch for this is the way to go. Yeah, this this way you get the really direct heat. It gives it a really vigorous kind of browning. Yeah. Um, and it prevents it from overcooking that way. Mm. All right, so while I'm finishing this off, do you want to grate me some ginger over there? Can do. And this is the cutest little grater. You've brought this in. Yeah. Is it usually for wasabi? It can be for wasabi. It's actually also traditionally used for grating ginger, some daikon radish as well, which ah. we're going to do a little bit later. Gee, it really does become quite fine and it sort of leaves all the fibrous parts behind. Definitely. And how much of this would you like? I think that looks perfect. Mm -hmm. So now that I've seared off my maguro, mm -hmm. I want to just cool it off so it doesn't overcook. So okay. I've got this little bowl of water here with some ice in it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to plunge the tuna in there just for a couple seconds or so. Well, I've never seen this being done, but it just makes total sense. It's like an instant stopping of the cooking. Exactly. Mm. Otherwise, it'll get a little bit too brown on the inside. It'll get kind of too overcooked. Mm -hmm. So after the water, we're just going to dry it off a little bit with this paper towel. Mm -hmm. You just want to very gently kind of get all of the water off. Yeah. All right, we're just going to let that rest as we prepare some of our other ingredients. Mm -hmm. So over here, we've got some uh, daikon radish. I'm going to peel this one. Okay. In the meantime, uh, I'll have you make our ponzu sauce. Sure can. So ponzu sauce is a seasoned soy sauce. So we've got that kombu there, which is uh, grown off of the northern part of Hokkaido. Mm -hmm. So that one grows in really cold waters of Japan. That's what gives a really kind of depth of flavor to it. Lovely. We're going to be adding in some citrus juices to our soy sauce. Um, so in there, you've got 75 milliliters of orange juice. Freshly squeezed. Freshly squeezed, of course. Mm -hmm. Some lime. This is the biggest lime I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so that one we're also going to put in 75 milliliters. Okay, and I'll freshly squeeze that in. Yeah, it's really a mixture of all of these different kinds of citrus, which give ponzu its characteristic kind of flavor. Okay. We're going to add in some yuzu afterwards, then some of our Japanese soy sauce. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing that, I'm just cutting some of this daikon radish here, which I'm going to grate in a moment. So I've just peeled it. And then afterwards, you can put in the katsuo bushi, which yes. are the shaved bonito flakes. It's quite smoky. I like mm. to think of it as fish bacon. Yes, that's a perfect way to describe it. <laughs> yeah, it'll give a really nice flavor to the soy sauce. Okay. And what are you doing over there? So I'm just cutting this daikon radish. I'm going to start grating it okay. for our tataki. Mm -hmm. And daikon, I mean, you can see how it comes. It's a giant radish. It's peppery, it's crunchy. It'll give a little bit of freshness to the mm. dish. Yeah, daikon radish, it grows in the winter months in Japan. Yep. And it's got a really kind of sweet flavor when they harvest it towards January. So we've mixed all the ingredients for our ponzu together now. Mm -hmm. um, this one is actually better if we let it steep for two days. Okay. We've prepared one a little bit earlier. Yep. Do you want to grab that? 
and the flavour just gets better and better, right? It does. And then we're going to strain out all of the little bits in it, and then what we'll have left is a nice, really flavourful, kind of citrusy soy sauce. Yum. Now, can I then put it in a jar in the fridge? How long will it last for? It'll last about a month. Definitely you want to keep it in the fridge so all of those citrus juices just stay, mm. you know, quite fresh. Gee, it smells good. Just all of the yuzu that we added, the yeah. lime, the orange, just awesome. And I've just finished grating this daikon radish here. So put this aside for now, and then we're going to chop some herbs. So I might give you this shiso here. Mm -hmm. So this is a herb that's in the mint family. It's got a little bit of notes of sesame in it as mm. well. We're going to chop a little bit of this one for our tuna tataki. A uh, chiffonade? A chiffonade. That'd be great, actually. Yes, chef. I can do that. All right. And you taught me this a while back, just to take out just the little stem there because it's not as palatable. That's right. In the meantime, I'm just going to slice these spring onion here. Okay. This will also be a little garnish for our tataki. I think sometimes you go to restaurants with tuna tataki, there's so many different ingredients. Yeah, we don't want to overpower it. I find a lot of restaurants, they'll place way too much garlic and spring onion over it. And yes. It can be kind of overtaking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'll try to get this as fine as you like it. Beautiful. How's that? That looks great. Okay. Thank you so much. So I'm going to cut this tuna now. Okay. So I want to cut some pretty thin slices here. And when cutting tuna, you want to be pretty gentle with it. In Japanese cuisine, you're using really a slicing motion. Mm. Look at the colour inside. You've got that collar, so that cooked collar around the side, and it's blushing in the centre. Anything over that, you've almost overcooked the tataki, right? That's right, <laughs> yeah. All right, so that should be good for okay. our tuna. So we're going to plate it up now. Mm -hmm. Got our slices of the maguru tataki here. Mm -hmm. Just going to do a little an arrangement on the center of the plate. It looks so good on that black plate, doesn't it? It does. It really just mm. pops the color. Yeah. All right, so I'll arrange our last slice there. And then I'll just drizzle a little bit of ponzu sauce over top. We want a little bit of it to soak into the slices. Mm. I want to leave an ample amount on the plate as well. It just looks kind of beautiful. So next, I'm going to put a little bit of this grated daikon radish ah, on top. Right. That'll sort of give it a little bit of freshness. It'll kind of take away the richness from the tuna. Mm -hmm. It'll cut the fattiness as well. All right, so I'm just going to add a little bit of this grated ginger. We just need a tiny little touch. Ginger can be quite overpowering, so mm -hmm. we just really want like a tiny little smidgen mm -hmm. on each little piece. So one of the many lessons I learned is it's all in moderation, it's all balanced, That's it's right. control too. Like you want to put so many more ingredients but just don't. Respect each individual ingredient. Mm. Yeah, having a bit of restraint is an important part of mm. cooking Japanese food, I feel like. So lastly, we're going to sprinkle over top a little bit of our spring onion. Just put a couple random piles around. Yeah, a little really, scattering. Really arty there, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we're just going to place on top a couple tufts of this shiso. So you can just do a little sprinkling on top of each slice like that. And if you did want to find the shiso, you can find it at all good Japanese uh, grocers. And there are many out there in all the capital cities um, and markets. I love my Saturday and Sunday markets. If you go to particular ones, sometimes you may be surprised and find it. And if you do, get it because you can make these fantastic recipes just like this tuna tataki with a little inspiration from our time in Shizuoka.